Browsing through the internet is interesting. When you think that it's beneficial, it's not always the case. All is fine until you encounter a couple of stories that get you irritated, frustrated, and simply scared of what's next. Some humans can experience dark things and simply talk about it on the internet. How? Well, this is Reddit, where you occasionally encounter some stories that would leave you wondering whether this is common or not. You would want to understand how it's a whole different world than what you usually see on a daily basis. Eventually you will get used to it because this is the dark side of Reddit. This is where the journey starts, and there's no going back. We'll just be climbing up from here, therefore, I'd recommend you to get ready. Six years ago, a now deleted account posted a question on Ask Reddit for the Reddit community. What is the craziest real life plot to a story you have? A lot of answers were provided, some simple, some weird, and some short. There was this particular one that stood out the most. It had the impact of no other and a level of darkness that wouldn't be expected. Feline Nursery, the user account name, replied to the question with a detailed paragraph that exceptionally answers the question and would answer all of our questions if we have any. The original poster, which we'll call OP, started by pinpointing that she was a college student when her father moved back to New Orleans. She mentioned the following. He moved into a cool apartment complex with a swimming pool in the center courtyard and a lot of sociable people his age. One of them was a retired army general. My dad and Tom were the same age and both Korean war veterans. My dad had been in the Marines for four years during the latter part of the war, while Tom had stayed in and risen through the ranks. This heavily implied what Tom has gone through and how hard he has been working to reach where he is and it somehow inspired OP because at the time she was still a college student that's about to graduate and looking for a grown up job. Her dad advised her that being an air marshal could be fun for a year or two even if it wasn't exactly something she was interested in especially since her father is friends with a two star general. After having a phone call with Tom to go over the details OP eventually did not follow this advice and went her own way with another job opportunity. During the phone call, Tom didn't really answer much of the questions asked by OP. He mentioned that this is the case because of operational security. His type of personality really keeps you on your feet, up and going, and he seemed to have a huge impact on this exact family. Because as OP mentioned, once Tom told my father that they had done computer simulations of a terrorist running up an airplane aisle, and the only part that stayed relatively motionless was the groin. Obviously in an airplane you want to hit the target and not the fuselage, so they decided to aim for the groin as a part of their doctrine. Curiosity sparked in OP's father, especially because he was a physician and came up with some solutions that he had later proposed to Tom. Tom then replied and said that a prominent pharmaceutical company was making a prototype. OP's dad didn't want money or credit, he was just happy to have been involved in solving a small problem for his country. Unfortunately, OP's dad passed away shortly before her deployment to Iraq. Her family, Gerfin, and herself drove to Grand Isle, Louisiana to scatter his ashes in the Gulf. Of course Tom was present and he was surprisingly wearing his full uniform. Why is that important you would ask? It's because when the ashes were scattered, Tom removed his white gloves and threw them in the water right behind the ashes, which is a moment that made OP look up to Tom even more. 
and he even promised both her and her sister to provide help whenever needed. OP then says the following, I fell out of touch with Tom after deploying and coming home. When Katrina hit, I called my sister-in-law Maggie to see if everyone was okay. I asked about Tom and she said, oh my god, you didn't hear about Mr. Tom. I tensed up and said no. What happened? What she said settled over me slowly like slime. What did happen to Mr. Tom? Did he pass away? Is he even okay? After Katrina hit, Maggie's house was underwater, so they had to go to her friend's house that was on a high ground. Unfortunately, they weren't alone, because Tom's older sister's house was underwater as well where she saw Maggie and immediately asked if she has heard from Tom. Maggie wasn't worried a bit and said that the government has a list of VIPs to check on and Mr. Tom is surely on it. His sister's response is the one that kept me questioning everything previously stated, where she replies with, Maggie, I know what Tom has told you, but what is it exactly that she mean though? Like told him what? Tom is actually a Penianti lawyer. Not a general, not a ranger, no air marshal program, no bleeding out through the chrome problem for OP's dad to waste his time solving. No, nothing. This simply never existed. What's even more sickening was that even his wife and daughter, which he claimed to not exist, are in fact alive. They just wrote him off because of his reality detachments. The real person that is actually behind all of Tom's stories is actually his brother-in-law. They simply never had contact with him ever since finding out. OP even searched him up on Google hoping she would get back in contact with him and she found nothing. It seemed like he disappeared. The story of Tom being detached from reality and creating one that is more pleasing for him is definitely saddening. He couldn't cope with how disappointed he was at his own life, where he found himself in a position of change, one that was unexpected. OP then ended with the following, I'm just glad my father passed away not knowing the truth. He would have been bereft and possibly would have beat the shit out of him. I'm saddened by my dead father having been played like a fool in his last years, but I'm also sad for Tom, and nothing better describes the situation. Wishes, fantasies, and all of our imagination is something we want to achieve and live, but mixing it with reality will take a toll on you, one that could lead you to more despairs, scares, and dangers. Imagination plays a big role in one's life, because without it, you're simply limited. What if imagining became more of a reality you did not expect? Would you risk it all and give in to it? On the 29th of February 2024, a username called individualcut4344 posted a small story on two reddit communities called paranormal and ghost. This will leave you questioning every dream, feeling, and intuition you have ever felt. For the past six years, the OP of this Reddit post has been experiencing disturbing dreams of unaliving, being hunted, attending their own funeral, and the list goes on. You would think what I named would be disturbing, but you have yet to witness the darkness of it all. One thing that did not sit right with me was the spirit activity they were experiencing. It all started with glimpses of shadows moving in the corner of her eye, crashing into walls or going upstairs. She heard sounds like someone was walking behind closed doors even when nobody was there. Things in her house started moving around on their own, like keys tapping on a keyboard that nobody was using, or her belongings shifting places. Then. Things got even weirder. She began hearing her boyfriend's voice when he wasn't home, or even when he was nowhere nearby. As time went on, she felt something walking next to her bed while she tried to sleep. And 
then she saw a huge shadow about seven feet tall watching her sleep from the foot of her bed. Now, it felt like this creepy presence was actually touching her. Ever since that happened, OP has been waking up with weird scratches or startled out of their sleep being shaken awake by something, someone or whatever this could be. Nothing was there. Nothing. It all made sense to OP once they puzzled the pieces and found out a pattern that freaked them out. Most of the times, whenever OP has dreamed or experienced such things, someone around them would pass away. They lost their grandpa, grandma, the family dog, a situationship's grandfather, their friends, and just family overall. And all these passings were shortly after these dreams. Once you realize the sequence of events that followed these dreams, you would only ask yourself one question, is it real or just a coincidence? Luckily enough, Opie's boyfriend has had similar experiences, which fully alienates the statement that was mentioned in the title, which is, I feel like I'm going crazy. It's normal for them to suspect such a thing, and it's obvious now that they are not. This was the same argument used by a user called Judy Just a Plan Lady where she replied to the OP claiming to feel comfort whenever someone else with her feels the same spirit activity in her previous house, one that was haunted. Apparently, Judy also faced similar instances, although the ones that were more reoccurring were her killing herself while dreaming. Unfortunately, the mystery still remains unsolved. This ache feeling will still remain with OP for as long as they will remember. It might even remain with you. Only if you let it. I'd suggest you see what's next, because then your mind will make sure to choose what will stick with you and how much you will think about every single detail to the point where you cannot even move. What strokes the brain of a person is how much dark Reddit can get. There is a community on Reddit that is focused on confessions. Five years ago, a username called misc997 posted a confession on the community that left people shocked like no other. The title of his post was, I am responsible for the deaths of several people. Around four years ago, Misk997 was a vendor on the darknet. He was just doing it because he was too lazy to get a job and at the time didn't want to settle for the 9 to 5 grind. At least, that's how he put it. Because he had ambitions to start a business all for himself and use the drug money as a start. Apparently, he was using drugs himself as well, where he met a lot of people that were dealing and then started dealing himself. His anxiety couldn't handle all the stress that comes with meeting up with someone to give him the order. And that's when he read about the Silk Road and Rose Ulbricht being caught. Ulbricht was the founder of Silk Road, the darknet marketplace, who was arrested back in 2013 and was charged with two life imprisonment terms plus 40 years with no chance of parole. For some reason, this got the OP obsessed with the idea of all that. And in learning operations security, which is the process that organizations deploy to prevent sensitive information from getting into the wrong hands, and he played it in such a smart way because he eventually opened up his own store using his connections, where he sold ketamine, meth, and some outdoor weed. A couple of weeks go by, and he meets a local connect that came into OP's town only once a week. He had pretty much any drugs you can imagine, so his business grew with more products to sell. He entered all the addresses into an excel spreadsheet, including the names of the customers, zip codes, orders, and quantities. During this period, he dealt with a particularly fine white powdered mescaline, 
Coincidentally, fentanyl also came in a similar white powder form, making them indistinguishable. A critical error occurred either in his spreadsheet or in his data entry process, resulting in seven mescaline orders being mistakenly filled as fentanyl orders. This is where things took a turn. All the orders went out, and everything seemed very much normal for a couple of days. He suddenly receives a message from one of his customers. He holds his phone and starts reading the message very slowly. It was shocking, demeaning, even disgusting. OP couldn't believe that he did that, that he killed someone. After checking his spreadsheet, he found 11 extra grams of mescaline and connected the dots. He immediately went to check his order log on the market to see if anyone had finalized on their purchase, and a couple of them did. He went to check the user's last activity, and none of them had logged in in at least three days, most of them two days. He immediately deactivated his venture account. He was fully aware now of what he did. He then knew he killed several people. He converted all his bitcoin to cash and ran away to live in a different country where he now works as a waiter. He hasn't spoken to anyone for weeks and hadn't touched drugs from that day. This haunts him every single day. He would go and check the customers names on Google where he found four of them dead and even one customer shared the drug with a friend resulting in both of their deaths. It haunts him to the point where he questions if he's even worthy of living. While these customers are dead because of him, there's only himself to blame. He is now consumed by all the guilt and the fear. So he asked himself, is it a life worth living? Reddit has played a crucial role in showcasing these kinds of stories. Why can people share this publicly and not even fear repercussions? No one in the replies even blamed the guy for what happened and just wished him a good life full of healing. Do they simply find it normal because of all the similar stories the users consume? Because this community is full of every single confession you can think of. Surprisingly, Misk997 didn't even delete his account and the story you just heard is his only post on Reddit. The fact that he was able to post it shows you enough of the darkness that is held by Reddit. And frankly, this is quite worrying. Normalizing such acts and giving comfort to killers, even if by mistake, should be forbidden. But this Reddit community openly offers it. So, what more can I say? After witnessing such stories and getting immersed in each one, you should have noticed how far a person can go and how dangerous your surroundings can be. But don't tap too much into it because if you gave it the time and effort it would stay with you and will simply limit you from living the life you live once the dark side of reddit does not only show you a dark side to reddit but a dark side to humanity as a whole keep the following in mind with discovering such stories don't spread them or else you will end up on the dark side of reddit Hey guys, broke the third wall here. I wanted to leave this message at the end of the video because anyone who's still watching the video till now deserves a special message. I want to thank everyone for their support lately because it has honestly exceeded my expectations. When I started Dreadnest, I had prepared myself mentally that the channel might not get any recognition until at least a year. However, I already have a decent amount of viewers that are anticipating my uploads and to those goes my dearest appreciation. I do have a request for some of you guys and that is I hope you can leave feedback on these videos whether it's positive or negative. Video after video improvement is necessary and that's only possible given your detailed comments. Besides that, thank you for watching. Till next time, bye Treadnest.